It's 2021 and you decided that yes, it's the year I'm going to start investing and I'm going to be using one of these robo-advisors. And in the Singapore landscape, I view these three players as pretty much the most established in terms of providing a very easy, all-in-one kind of portfolio. They are stashed away with its core product, Cypress 2, which is the global RE product, as well as the E100 or Equity 100. And then finally, you have Endowers with their own core investment product. For the purpose of this video, I'll actually be ignoring some of the more niche or specialized products that they have. For example, Saif has their Read Plus, and Dowers has their Fund Smart, which is actually more of a DIY kind of product. I'll give you an overview of their products and how they compare with each other, how they did in 2020, including their drawdowns, and then leave you with some considerations of what you might want to think about if you're considering these three players. At the end of it all, I'll give you a cheat sheet. And if you're just really lazy to watch this video, I'll leave it in the description below as well. Hey guys, it's Winman and welcome back to Your Money Game, the show where we'll get better with saving, spending and investing. So let's get right to it by comparing their key products and how are they really different. So let me start with Stashaway and Sife's Global RE product and I'm going to lump them together. There are two things that define these products. Let's start with the first, which is the fact that there are dynamic portfolios that evolve towards the market's conditions. This simply means that depending on how the economy is doing and what the markets are doing, the selection of products and different assets change with it. The second is your ability to pick a risk profile so that the system knows how to calibrate the portfolio for you. All in all, they both try to maximize return while balancing risk as well. Next is Sife's Equity 100 or E100 and they basically promise you a straightforward 100% allocation towards equities. The strategy is termed as smart beta and what they're promising really is again straightforward. I'm going to try to produce the best results for you given the market conditions. And this approach is a combination of two things as well. It starts with academic research that points to these things called factors in the stock market. Factors are what explains a stock's returns over time. So for example, a factor could be value, which is a stock that's either relatively cheap or relatively expensive. Another factor could be size, which is relatively small or relatively big. So FYI, this research actually points to a few factors that tend to outperform over a long period. And that's where the second element of this Scythe E100 product comes in. Scythe isn't just relying on this academic research, but instead trying to time the market according to which factors do well in which period. If you look towards the history of every year and which factors tend to outperform or underperform, you realize that it changes each year. So Scythe believes that it can cherry pick which are the best factors based on the current environment. And this leads us finally to Endowers. First of all, it is a portfolio that allows you to choose your risk profile as well. Secondly, it's built off the same research that Scythe's E100 is built off, but with a big difference. Instead of trying to time the market, which is notoriously difficult, Endowers is relying on that research to do its job, which is basically that over time, the performance of those factors will show up and you just really can't time when it's going to happen. Now with the core products out of the way, let's talk about how they performed during 2020. So the performance figures that I'll be showing you are based off their riskiest profiles, which is basically which ones allow you the maximum potential gain, but also the maximum potential loss. And I'll be looking at the performance of you investing a lump sum in the 1st of January and taking the performance right at the end of 31st of December. The only asterisk here is the E100, but I'll talk about that a little bit more later. So let's start with Stashaway and their 36% risk index. During the year of 2020, it had a maximum drawdown, which is basically a dip from the top to the bottom of about 29%. And it ended up the year 16%. Moving on to Scythe's Global RE 25% DR or downside risk. They had a maximum drawdown of roughly 16 to 17%, but ended up the year down about 4.5%. Moving on to Scythe's E100, that's a little asterisk there because the product actually only launched in the middle of the year. Nevertheless, I'm taking a bit of creative license here and I reconstructed their portfolio using a free tool. Of course, the assumption here is that the portfolio didn't shift and it maintains the same funds with the same ratios as well. So disclaimer aside, the portfolio would have experienced about a 16% drawdown, but it ended the year up 25%. Now, if you go to the website, you'll see it's actually about 23 
And again, that's because the portfolio launched in the middle of the year. Moving on to Endowers' max risk profile of 100% equities, its portfolio had a really staggering drawdown of a roughly 67% during that March period. But what's amazing is that it ended the year up 12%. And for the fun of it, I'm going to throw in the results of the S&P 500 itself. So if you invested at the start of January and exited at December, the S&P 500 would have given you a drawdown of roughly 33% but you would have ended the year up about 16%. But there's absolutely no drawdown or drawback for you to click on that like and subscribe button because that really tells YouTube that, hey, this channel is doing all right and you'd like to see more of this content. Performance aside, when you're making a decision, you really need to consider a few other factors. So let's start with that. Now, let me start by lumping together Stashaway and Sive's Global RE. We know from the results that Stashaway's system won in 2020 but if you look at the portfolio composition right now, it's actually quite interesting. Saif's global RE right now is very defensive and has about roughly 27% in bonds and about 6.5% in gold. So for those of you who don't know, those are just two assets that happen to be very defensive in the event of a market crash or correction. Stashaway, on the other hand, currently has about 17% in gold, but if you invested in the fund right now, it would actually be closer to about 20%. This simply means that right now, if you happen to want to choose Sipes Global RE, that portfolio in theory would be able to endure a market correction or sell-off in a better way. But at the same time, if the markets continue to rally higher, you might be foregoing some of those gains. Next is comparison between Sipes E100 and Endowers. There's no denying that in 2020, the E100's system clearly produced superior results. Yeah. It's only natural for us to be attracted to it, but the question you should ask yourself is that, do you believe that their performance can be sustained over time, or do you rather believe in the principles that you shouldn't really be trying to time the market? In fact, one of the professors that worked on the research itself says that timing the market is a really foolish thing to do. There's no absolute right or wrong here because, hey, that's a whole discussion on its own. I've attached the link in the description below if you wanted to read more and understand how these factors work and again, come to your own conclusion. Moving on to the third thing, which are costs. And I know it's important for many of you. The good news is that all these platforms don't charge you some form of transaction fee. But there are a few things worth mentioning here. Right off the bat, Stashaway looks like the most expensive here, starting with 0.8% of management fees. It's also worth noting that Stashaway doesn't use tax-efficient funds, which are called USITS funds, whereas Endowers as well as Equity 100 uses them. If you didn't know it already, any form of dividends that are given to you by US-based companies or funds are taxed at a 30% rate and it's called a withholding tax. USITS funds do that as well, but the percentage is only 15%. Comparing Scythe and Endowers' costs, they're both actually quite similar, but Endowers has a little bit of an edge if you wanted to invest your CPF or SRS with them. The important thing to note about Endowers is that you need a minimum of $10,000 to start an account. The other two players don't have any minimum, so it's much easier to start with. And here are some other aspects worth noting. Firstly, you can have access to a complimentary session with a financial advisor through Scythe, which is about 30 minutes, and through Endowers of about 15 minutes. Next is that Endowers specifically has the most holistic collection of products where you can invest your cash, CPF, as well as your SRS. So it's great for convenience if you want to bundle all your services together. Stashaway allows for SRS investing as well, but unfortunately, Scythe at this point doesn't have that. Now here are some final things to note, especially if you're a newer investor. First is that to always be mindful of the data you see. So if you go on their websites and you explore their products a bit more, which I encourage you to do, all the kind of performance data over there usually do not reflect any fees included as well. So therefore, it looks nice, but again, performance over time minus fees, it can show a very different story. And the second point is that a market correction will eventually come. Now, we as investors, we shouldn't be afraid of that fact because hey, it always happens, you can't really predict when it's gonna happen. But the good part is over long periods, markets tend to rise again as well. And I say that for some of you who might be holding on to cash right now, fearing the talk about potential market correction. The third point is that with the eventual crash and subsequent recovery, 
it might not play out exactly as how it did in 2020. Remember that it's a year with unprecedented views, the most in history. What clearly worked very well during that period was tech, the US markets as a whole, China, large cap and growth stocks. And I bring that up because in the eventual market correction sometime in the future, it does not mean the performance of these robots will replicate itself exactly the same. And finally, as I promised, I've included a cheat sheet here as well, so you can use it as a quick Yay! reference. I've also put it in the link below, so you can just download it for reference in the future. So, I hope you guys found this useful, and if you did, I would really appreciate your support in clicking that like, subscribe, as well as that bell button, because I'll be back again next Sunday with a brand new video. And until then, you take care, and keep playing your own game. Thank you.